A five-story apartment building in Krivi Rih, the hometown of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, was hit by a Russian ballistic missile, injuring at least eight people, officials said on Monday. Emergency services were searching through the rubble, Oleksandr Vykal, head of Krivi Rih military administration said. The missile destroyed all five stories in one part of the building. The attack was one of several which smashed into cities in southern and eastern Ukraine on Monday, officials said, killing at least six civilians and injuring about 30 others. Russia recently intensified strikes that have long tormented civilian areas, Zelensky said, in an apparent effort to unnerve Ukrainians and wear down their willingness to keep up a war that is approaching its 1,000-day milestone. The newly elected U.S. President Donald Trump is already shaping the country's policy on the main directions, Ukraine and Israel. This was reported by Bloomberg. With phone calls to the leaders of both nations, and another expected with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Trump's victory, and the possibility he will seek major policy changes, is reverberating in both countries and well beyond. One former Trump administration official, who asked not to be identified discussing private assessments, said the president-elect will have an immediate head start thanks to the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. U.S. adversaries may change their behavior in advance, the person said, some deterred by the threat of U.S. retaliation, and others seeking to exploit their remaining leverage before President Joe Biden leaves office. That's being felt most acutely in Ukraine. Trump promised during the campaign to solve the Ukraine crisis before Inauguration Day, and President Volodymyr Zelensky is already scrambling to catch up. Tesla CEO and Trump supporter Elon Musk was in the room for Zelensky's call with Trump this week, according to a person familiar with the matter. Musk has previously advocated for a negotiated solution in which Ukraine gives up some of its territory. Trump's election has changed the Ukrainian rhetoric and planning in their views about negotiations, said Shelby Majid, deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Majid said Ukraine is moving in the direction, knowing that Trump has won, of accepting that negotiations are a reality. A former Trump administration official told the publication that the elected president will benefit from the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. According to the publication, the authorities of this country are beginning to realize the inevitability of negotiations. Trump is expected to pursue a policy of reluctance in the fight for territories occupied by Russia. Israel, however, will benefit the most from Trump's presidency. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is a longtime ally of Trump. Trump has already publicly stated that he will give Israel more freedom to prepare possible strikes on Iran especially if Tehran decides to change its nuclear concept, the publication noted. The fact of an electoral result is itself reassuring for some countries, which were preparing for either outcome but unable or unwilling to move forward without knowing who would lead the US and in what direction. The Kremlin will step up its aggression against Ukraine in the coming months, including resuming strikes on energy infrastructure facilities and may also attempt to assassinate the Ukrainian leadership. This statement was made by the former head of the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry, Vadim Pristaiko, whose words are quoted by The Economist. They will try to do something. 
they will destroy the energy system, they will try to kill the leadership, the former minister said. In his opinion, the next three months will be terrible. Increasing aggression may be a way of negotiating for Russian dictator Vladimir Putin after Donald Trump was elected US president. The publication writes that Trump may be impressed by Putin's style of governance and Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky may face two possible outcomes, defeat or dead end, since it is unclear how exactly the US president-elect intends to fulfill his promise to quickly end the war in Ukraine given during the election campaign. Journalists admit that even Trump himself may not know what his plan is. The article states that the Ukrainian authorities are working with two options for ending the war voiced by Trump's entourage. The first option is to freeze the war along the current front lines and force Kiev into neutrality. It was voiced by J.D. Vance, whom Trump wants to be his vice president. The second option was voiced by Mike Pompeo, who served as Secretary of State during Trump's first term. This option, as the publication notes, suits Kiev better since it provides for increased military and financial assistance to Ukraine to contain the Kremlin's aggressive intentions and also preserves the prospect of the Ukrainian state joining NATO. Meanwhile, Bloomberg writes, Trump made it clear that he cannot simply push Ukraine to make concessions to Putin without receiving anything in return. The Guardian writes that Trump's rise to power is unpredictable. It is impossible to predict with certainty how the Republican will behave on the issue of the war between Kiev and Moscow. Judging by his previous statements, he may force the warring countries to the negotiating table. There are four points that Russian dictator Vladimir Putin will likely present to Ukraine and Trump as conditions for ending the war. This is the result he can present to his own population as a victory. The Guardian recalled that back in 2022, Putin had already appropriated four Ukrainian regions and Crimea on paper, including those territories that his army did not control. He will probably insist that Ukraine give them back to him, including the regional centers of Kherson and Zaporizhia. Another requirement could be the so-called buffer zone. This is the withdrawal by Ukraine of serious weapons from the borders of the Russian Federation and the occupied territories. The third condition is reparations for the destruction of the occupied Donbass. And the last thing in Ukraine's refusal to join NATO and return to neutral status. All this would be unacceptable for Kiev and the majority of Ukrainians, the article says.